Hey, it's Clay. How are you guys doing? This is going to be another guitar vlog, this time talking about some of my favorite picks and recommendations for somebody who's looking for some to build a guitar rig that's got really quality bang for the buck, um, kind of sleeper, where you're getting a ton of value for not a lot of money. This is going to be the ultimate stuff in, uh, in, in bang for your buck. So let's just go ahead and get started with amps. Um, so with amps, I and and first and foremost, I want to I'm just going to kind of assume that you're a pretty I guess straightforward type of player playing kind of uh, straightforward types of things. If you're into more heavy metal or kind of jazz, that's not necessarily me. This is going to be more focused on classic rock, blues, maybe praise and worship, kind of the stuff that I am more knowledgeable about. Um, and also, I'm going to just kind of give recommendations through each of these three categories, amps, pedals, and guitars. And just kind of as a starting off point, you know, really with a lot of these things, it's about what's finding what works for you, what fits your ear. So, you know, a lot of these are, it's not necessarily what's better or worst. It's more about finding what works for you, uh, you know, because everybody has different tastes and preferences. So let's start off with amps. Um, getting a really good amp is... A really important part of your of your signal path you know definitely having a good guitar is important but having a good amp is is extremely important you know if you take a three thousand dollar PRS and plug it into a twenty five dollar Fender frontman you know practice amp it's gonna sound terrible but on the other hand if you take a Squire classic vibe and plug it into a pretty nice tube amp with some decent pedals that will pretty much get you ninety percent of the way there of having a pretty high-end rig so Let's start off with amps. My number one recommendation is definitely going to be the VHT Special 6. Um, now, there's two versions, and it really just kind of depends on what your needs are. Now, they have the, the older version, which is the... Um, and they also all both come in head and cabinets format. So, again, it's all about finding what is important for you. So, I'm actually going to look this up on... Let's, let's actually do it on Guitar Center. Uh, we'll look up for some used. So I actually have owned this amp. I owned the Ultra in a head version, and I really liked it. It was a great amp. Um, but the 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 standard ones, the non ultras. So I believe that would be like this guy. They're pretty darn good amps as well. Very, they're single ended, six watts, um, but pretty darn loud. If you need to play clean, loud, clean with a drummer, this is not going to be the amp for you. But um, if you can play loud with distortion, this amp would do just fine. Hanging with a drummer, um, really versatile. It it would it requires the least amount of work to get going. There are a lot of other amps in this category that people recommend, you know, like the Fender Blues Junior is the quintessential starting point. Well, the thing with the Blues Junior is that a lot of I guess players when they get a little bit along the line, playing for a few years, there's the Blues Junior tends to not cut it at that point. Um, then you start looking to mods or speaker upgrades or, or just selling it and go on to something else altogether. Whereas the special six is a, just a good amp and you know, whether or not it's 200 bucks, I mean, that is a lot of amp for $200. Um, you can get it in a, in a, as a combo, or you can get it as a head and buy a special ca uh, extra cabinet on the side. So a lot of flexibility and versatility. If you are just looking for something you don't really know what you're doing, you just want an amp, then I would definitely recommend getting the combo just so that you can be done with it. Um, they don't have any on here, but we can check. Rube.com probably would definitely have some. I mean, they're just a, it's just a really solid amp all around. Um, yeah, right here you can get a two by you can get a one by ten. This is the the basic special six for two hundred twenty bucks. That is pretty crazy. 190 for this guy. I mean, just a really, for the money that you're paying, you're getting a lot of tube amp. It's basically a Fender Champ, if you know anything about that. Um, so anyways, I'll stop raving, but this is a fantastic recommendation just because you're getting so much amp for so little money. Um, 200 bucks, hard to beat. Now, the next recommendation is going to be the Fender Mustang 3 version 2. Now, this might surprise some people. The Mustang series is an interesting series. Um, I actually owned, I think it was a Mustang II for a few years, 
I mean, I've got some videos on my channel, and I really liked it. I think it was a V, it was a Mustang 2 V2. Now, I will recommend, am recommending the 3 V2, and this is actually important. So what this means is the 3 is going to upgrade the speaker. So the difference between the 2 and 3 is mostly in the fact that the 3 has a really nice Celestian, which is a, a pro-level guitar speaker, and that makes a huge difference. And the V2 means that the, the software has been upgraded, and I've heard a lot of reviews, and I've heard it even myself, that the, they improved the sound quality of the amp models quite a bit. Um, so with the Mustang, you get a, it's a modeling amp, so it's not a tube amp, but in terms of getting an amp that works really well and sounds really good, you're getting a tremendous product. I mean, and this is just, this amp sounds really good. There's a lot of demos of it on, I know, wrecked. You, there are a lot of demos on the internet. There are a lot of people that have g gigged with it. I mean, this amp is tried and true. Um, you know, it is digital, which some people are looking for the real deal. But, you know, if you want something that sounds really good, it's again, it's got this 12-inch Celestian speaker that's really important. The amp bottles sound really good. Um, it's got some really nice features for a newer player. Let's see if I can zoom in. Come on, buddy. So it's got an auxiliary input. I don't know if you can read that, but that means you can plug your, your phone or an iPod into it, and you can get a backing track going or a metronome. You can also uh, use headphones for practice. I mean, it doesn't need any volume. If you if you play in an apartment or in a college dorm and you can't have a lot of volume, the master it works really effectively on this. You can record with it with a via USB to your inter to your computer. Um, just a lot. You don't necessarily need to get a lot of effects because it has some basic effects with it just a tremendous uh value amp again for probably two to three hundred bucks um now some of these guys these three the igniter tweaker the pv classic and the vintage silverface fender these guys are getting more into kind of serious these are you know this is a 15 watt amp this is 20 to upwards of 50 and these vintage fenders are probably going to be at least 30 up to you know 40, 50, etc. These are more of serious gigging musicians. Uh, they need to play with a band. You need to have some more headroom. You need to. You're you're not just a bedroom player or a guy going to jams. You're, you know, you need more volume. You need more power. So this is where I'm. These recommendations are going to be geared more towards you guys. Um, these are, you know, this Ignator Tweaker is a really full featured 15 watt tube amp head really versatile get a lot of different flavors and voices um sounds really good and the tweakers are igniter as a whole they they make some solid amps i know the reliability has increased initially right when they came out there were some reliability problems but i think those have been largely smoothed out um over the course of the development of that product and so really i've, I've owned a tweaker and it's a really good sounding amp now the PV Classic series, so this would be like the Classic 30 is probably the one that's going to be most people would know. The, the Classic 20 and the Classic 50 are also good amps. These guys are kind of your your workhorse, reliable. I mean, built like a tank. They're really solid, undervalued amps. I mean, the Classic 30 has two channels. It's got effects loop. It's got everything that you would want in a tube amp, and it sounds good. It's no nonsense, just straightforward, good sounding tube amp. You know, you that could last you a whole career with that thing. And then I actually am a big fan of some of these Silverface Fenders. So I recently just bought a Silverface Bandmaster Reverb, and I probably paid less for the the Bandmaster than I did for my Blues Junior years ago when I was just starting. And I, that blows my mind. But the the these old amps sound really good. The Silverface Fenders specifically. Are pretty undervalued compared to the blackface and there, there are some real screaming deals like basements and bandmasters and showmans those are all heads where the combos are pretty popular like a, a super reverb is probably gonna be pretty expensive but a, a bandmaster is basically the same thing basement is a really reliable amp and especially if you get the ones that are uh, maybe late 60s 68 69 early 70s 70 71 they're they are not heavily modded. Uh, the later that you get into the 1970s, the general rule is that there are going to be more modifications. It has like a master volume added. You just want to stay away from those. But if you can get the earlier vintage Silverface Fenders, they're really good amps. 
Um, you can take it to a tech, and he can check it out. If you can, if you can learn some basic um, <clears throat> servicing an amp, is definitely something that can be done on your own. You can learn how to do that. You know, but remember that getting inside of a tube amp does have some dangerous voltages in there. But um, I've I've been learned how to do it myself, and I've been able to. You know, when my bandmaster came in, actually the the reverb tank had gotten disconnected in shipping. So I was able to solder that back up, no problem. Um, so they do require a little more tender, loving care, especially compared to like some of these. These choices are all, they're new amps, so they're going to be supported and they're reliable. But um, in terms of tone, these these vintage fenders are solid, solid amps, and they give you tremendous value. You know, they're going to hold their value really well. So yeah, those, those are my recommendations for the amp section. Try to hit a, a variety of different things. Um, so take that for what you will. Now let's get into pedals. So um, in terms of pedals, I'm going to recommend a mixture of probably one or two overdrives, and then also some effects for you know delays, reverbs, some modulation. This is my approach. If I was going to get um, to to get this all to build a pedal board basically uh, to go with an amp. This is my recommendation. So for these first three right here are going to be more for delays, reverbs, delay, reverb, and modulation. That's going to be these guys. So my first recommendation is the Zoom G3. Now this is technically a multi-effects unit. It does everything. It has amp sims, and it has every type of effect you can think of. But... Um, just for delay reverb modulation, this pedal is amazing. The delays are really solid. The reverbs are really solid. The modulations are really solid. It's got a small footprint. You can easily fit it on a pedal board. It's got three foot switches, so you can have three effects going at once. And it has three hidden uh, effects that can be active. So you could have a compressor and a bit of room reverb that you just leave on all the time that you don't need to switch on and off via the foot switches. You can just have those active in the background which is a really cool feature um so the zoom g3 you know these things are really really cheap i think you could probably get a use one for like 100 bucks which is unbelievable um 149 new that's crazy let's see what you could get it for used i mean these things are nuts i've had a zoom g3 okay that's 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 not a good deal but anyways, these things are pretty sweet. I've got a. There's got to be. I'm. I'm pretty sure you guys could get it for about a hundred bucks, if not less. Um. Okay, I guess they're kind of holding steady. But anyways, really solid, solid effects units. Uh, another thing I'll recommend is TC Electronic. I think they make really, really nice, especially with the tone print. You got a lot of value and a lot of versatility. You could do like a Hall of Fame. Reverb and a flashback delay, and you could be done and be really happy. Digitech Hardware is also really nice. Uh, but again, I am more partial to using some multi-effects, and specifically the Zoom G3 I think is a real winner. If you want some delay reverb modulation, you can ex hook up an external tap tempo, which is a really cool feature. You can get a tap tempo switch for like $15 on eBay, and boom, you're good to go. And this device can do a lot. So that's going to be my big recommendation. And then I would supplement that with some analog drive pedals. Um, now, this is kind of a list. You know, you with drive pedals, this can be a little bit of a rabbit hole in terms of getting the sound that you want and, and trading and trying different things. I mean, it guys can get really deep into this. Um, I have kind of moved out of the overdrive space just because I use a lot of digital stuff like with my XFX or the Pod HD, and so then I use just amps that are driven for my overdrive sounds. But I do have some effects, and I've, I've used all of these and own them, and so this is kind of my recommendation. So f let's actually move this guy down here. Um, so for really inexpensive stuff, I actually do recommend Joyo. Um, so I think Joyo kind of gets a bad rap because they're made in, in China. They look really stinky. Like their tube screamer has got to be one of the ugliest things in the world. 
I mean, their their effects are not pretty. But in terms of pretty, I mean, you just cannot contend with the price. I mean, they're so cheap. I think I have a Ultimate Drive, which is supposed to be a kind of a clone of a OCD. I think I got it for 20 bucks. This Vintage Drive, either of these two pedals would, are really solid bang for your buck overdrives. Um, these these guys right in here, the character, they're kind of character series clones. Um, I think Joe gets a bad rap because they are cloning pedals. I mean, this is like this American is just a straight ripoff of the um, Tech 21. So that's kind of annoying. But, I mean, in, if you think about it, I mean, pedals have been getting cloned since the beginning of time. So there's a little bit of a double standard going on just because if you think about, I mean, how many people have copied the Tube Screamer? I mean, literally every pedal company in the world has a Tube Screamer copy. So I guess I can, I mean, it's like, why is it okay to make a Tube Screamer copy, but it's not okay to make a Tech 21 copy? But I digress away from the ethics. But anyways, Joyo, for the bang for your buck, they're pretty solid pedals. Um, in my experience with the the Ultimate Drive is the one I spent the most time with. So the big difference between this and like the really high-end pedals is going to be in the hardware, like the knobs and the enclosure. It's it's solid, but it's just not as quality. And then the circuit and the components are going to be close, but they're going to be a little bit clunky. So what I mean by that is like the gain range. Um, it's just clunky. Like it has a sim similar gain range as the OCD, but its effective sweep is really only from like zero to about here, like 11 o'clock. And then from here on up, it's just like the same. It's all high, is really, really gainy, really crunchy distortion. Whereas the OCD would have a more smooth taper throughout the whole circuit. Same thing with the tone. It just kind of has a little bit of a different sweep. I don't know if they're using like the wrong types of pots, if they're using log pots and they should be using linear pots or whatever. But um, for the most part, these Joyo pedals are really good. And so I recommend them. Um, Exotic Effects makes some really solid, like their RC booster is, is really well known. You can get those for under $100. Um, these three right here, the MXR Classic Overdrive, I bought this at a Guitar Center for like $20. I and mean, it was crazy. Every once in a while, Guitar Center will have like a blowout on these. It's 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 seasonal. It's not for sale all the time, but if you can see it, it's a really great pedal. Bad Monkey is tried and true. The nice thing is that it has a bass and treble knob, so you have a lot of flexibility. Um, Dan Electro Transparent Overdrive. The version 1 is like a Timmy, and the version 2, I think they maybe kind of got their own thing, but good pedals, less than 60 bucks. And then the Paul Cochran Timmy is a solid choice if you want to get like a really boutique high-end pedal. I mean, this, I've owned one, and it is a great pedal. And it's not magic or anything, but it's just a great overdrive. And it's like 130 bucks that he, you buy direct from him. He's a really upstanding guy. So I got a, I mean, for 130 bucks to get a really great overdrive pedal that this could be your your main overdrive for life. I mean, that's that's pretty sweet. So yeah, let's kind of review for a second. I would get probably two overdrives. I would get an, a tube screamer and then maybe something else just for a different flavor. You could get a Timmy and a Bad Monkey, and you would have a really good amount. You could stack them together. You can you know, use one for a boost. Use one for your crunchy rhythm. Get a Zoom G3 for all your delay modulation with an external tap tempo. So have a reverb always on. Keep one of your foot switches for maybe a modulation and one for a delay. Or I, I used to run two delays, and then I would run a like arena reverb for swell. Get a special six. I mean, that'd be like 200 bucks. 300 bucks. Now we're talking about like $400, 450 maybe. If if you got 200 here, 100 here, and then maybe yeah, yeah, about $450 and you would have a really really versatile and powerful rig. Um and then lastly, I'll talk about guitar just a little bit. So my personal preference is to build my own. I would build my own guitar before I bought one, but that's just me. I realize that not everyone can do that. So these are my recommendations. Uh, Squire Classic Vibes, they're just really, really solid strats and tellies. The, the Classic Vibe Telly in particular is a really, really great axe. Tell the 50s, I think, is the one I really prefer. I mean, they really don't need a lot of upgrades, which is the thing, thing that I really like about them. 
in terms of quality, they're right up there with the Made Mexico, and they're like half the price. So um, I'm a big fan of the Classic Vibes. That's where I would start. Uh, PRS SE's line is really nice too, um, especially on the used market. They've been around for a while, and you can find some really good deals. Um, some of like the uh, Santana models actually go for like two or three hundred bucks. So do a little bit of digging there, um, and you can find some good deals. And then the PV Predator and Reactor are actually really interesting. The Predator is a Strat copy, and the Reactor is a Telecopy. These were like made in the USA guitars, and they're really, really inexpensive. But they're just you know just like with these PVs up here, you know, t they're built to last. They sound good. They're really just effective instruments. Not not a lot of bling or flash, but just very, very effective. You know, you see, you could probably do 200 bucks here. There's four. There's five. Maybe about for $600. You get a whole guitar rig. Um, you know, I think if you went to the high end, this would be about five hundred, six. You know, you could do seven, eight. This would be maybe about twelve. So we're running ranging anywhere from about five hundred to twelve hundred dollars. You could get a really, really nice guitar rig that you could cover a ton of ground on. Basically, gig with. I mean, I I cannot think of anything where you couldn't really get it done with a setup like this. Um, you got a really solid amp, some really nice pedals to kind of expand on that basic platform, and then a solid guitar to get you started. Um, not a ton. I mean, these a lot of these things, too, are going to be good for years to come. You can just add to your collection rather than have to replace. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. Um, I'm, I also tried to pick some things that are going to be um, a little bit not just like flavor of the month or, you know, things that are, you know, like some of these PRS SEs or the Classic Vibes or the PV Classics. These things have been good deals for years and they will be good deals for years to come. Special Six as well, you know, just really solid gear, uh, you know, even if you're watching this video years into the future. So please let me know your thoughts down below. If you want to see more stuff like this, please leave a comment, let me know, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.